Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is my hope and prayer that this video is actually going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I'm fine. Kisumu is also fantastic. Maybe you could let me know where you are watching the video from. The county or the country in case you are out of the republic. A few weeks ago, William Samoy Araproto met with over 30 members of parliament from Jubilee Party at State House in Nairobi. And the 30 members of parliament agreed to support Kenya Kwanza government. Then a few days later, nine members of parliament from uh, Luunyanza, ODM Party, again went to State House. And they affirmed that they will be working with William Samuel Arapruto and Kenya Kwanza. And I've been asking myself one question. What about WIPA members of parliament? The truth of the matter is that William Ruto has always had a lot of interest in Ukambani politics. But one man, Stephen Kanonzo Mosioka, has always outwitted William Ruto as far as Ukambani politics is concerned. And I find it very strange that William Ruto can actually go to the mountain and take the mountain from the grip of Uhuru Muge Kenyatta. But he cannot do, he cannot actually dare the same on Waipa. So yesterday, Kalonzo Musioka, the Waipa party leader, who is likely to be the Azimio presidential candidate in 2022, held a retreat in Nakuru with his members of parliament. And during that retreat, Stephen Kalonzo Musioka exposed how William Ruto made attempts to persuade Waipa members of parliament from Ukambani to state house. And his target was very specific. He wanted the ones from Akwin. For those who follow the politics of this country, a few weeks earlier, the Makwini governor, Senator, former Senator Mutula Kilonzo Jr., started singing praises of William Samara Pluto. And at some point he revealed that William Ruto was actually planning to go to Makwini. And William Ruto himself made it public that he was planning to go to Makwini. So Kalonzo Musioka revealed that uh, William Ruto wanted the members of parliament from Makwini to go to State House. These members of parliament refused. In this video, I want us to look at two things. Why William Ruto has a lot of interest in Ukambani politics. And number two, the second thing I want us to look at is why WIPA members of parliament rejected State House visit. Before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, I want you guys to take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is now. Let us get back to the main issue. And uh, some of you have been asking me about uh, everything. You know, I told you about uh, my daughter. She's still in uh, hospital. You know, the mother was involved in some accident. So uh, during birth, there were a bit of some complications. The temperatures were rising. So she's still in hospital. Probably by tomorrow, they'll be discharged. We were supposed to be discharged yesterday. Then the temperature rose to almost, uh, was it 39.8? Yeah, but it's being managed. So hopefully tomorrow we'll be back here and you will see her somewhere here. Okay. Now, why do you think William Ruto is keen uh, on members of parliament? Because William Ruto is very clear on one thing. That he's not going to have any handshake with Raila Odinga. He doesn't want anything to do with Raila Odinga, who is the Odium party leader. He doesn't want anything to do with Kalonzo Musioka the Waipa party leader, and he also doesn't want anything, some extent maybe, with Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta, but he wants his members of parliament. Why do you think he's not interested in these people, while at the same time he's going behind these guys to try and persuade their members of parliament? Because, for example, the nine members of parliament who went to status from Luonyanza, you know they were elected on ODM. Question is, why would they go if Relodinga is not going, the answer they can get from Waipa 
members of parliament but this is these are some of the reasons why ruto is keen on kambani specifically number one william ruto understands that in 2027 his threat is likely to be kalonzo musyoka so he's keen on dimming the lights of kalonzo musyoka that's why he wants this ukambani number two he also understands that azimio rallies are taking momentum so the only way to, to reduce that momentum is by getting these members of parliament. Like for example, if Azimio were to hold a rally in, uh, in Makueni, for example, and the governor is not there, the elected members of parliament is not there, then, you know, automatically questions will be raised. The other thing why he wants this to campaign is that William Ruto is keen on scuttling Azimio. Kalonzo Musyoka can only be strong in Azimio with members of parliament. We, how would it appear like, for example, Bart Takaro attending Azimio meetings without a member of parliament? You know, really, there's something. Then William Root is also keen specifically on isolating Raila Molodinga. That's something I've stated here severely. If, for example, this Ukambani MPs were to leave, and for example, they convince Kalonzo to also leave, where do you think Raila will be? Raila will be left with his ODM party, and the attempt will now be made to ensure that ODM is made to appear as if it's a low party. And not just that, by winning the support of nine members of parliament, then the perception would be Raila Odinga is now losing grip of Nyanza. And again, William Ruto is also very keen on uh, legitimacy of his government. There has been the questions. That's why even yesterday, when he was in Ethiopia, he still, if you look at uh, his uh, tweet, talking about his legitimacy. Kenya Kwanza legitimacy. So if we were to have these members of parliament, like uh, the nine members of parliament from Luonyanza said, okay, Raila Ruto won, the IBC declared him, courts ruled in his favor, then the Ukambani MPs would do the same, he will, uh, he will win that legitimacy. And of course, politics is a perceptional game. William Ruto is keen on that creating that perception that if he's the winning members of parliament from Luland, Ukambani, already Jubilee has gone, then he will, be, he will be having that perceptional value. But why do you think the, the members of parliament from Wiper, all of them, rejected this offer? The one who have stuck with Kalonzo Musyoka. Why do you think Wiper of all the political parties we have, why do you think Wiper members of parliament stood their ground? Why do you think they did that? For me, they, they did this for four or five reasons. Number one, Kalonzo Musyoka's 2027 presidential bid. Two things. Kalonzo Musyoka will either run as a presidential candidate using white party ticket or he will be the Azimio presidential candidate. Whichever way you look at it, Kalonzo Musyoka is going to be on the ballot in 2022. Now, if Kalonzo Musyoka will be on the ballot, the truth is, members of parliament from Ukambani are the ones who can boost that bid, especially within Azimio. Because in Azimio, I know they'll create, come up with a process whereby they are going to have uh, people applying, then people voting. Perceptionally, if Ukambani MPs were to leave Kalonzo, that they are now not with Kalonzo, and Kalonzo is competing within Azimio, people will question him. I know, like, for example, ODM will question Kalonzo that we will not nini. What are you coming, bringing to the table? So by having these members of parliament on board, they actually boost Kalonzo Musyoka's bid. And these members of parliament rejected William Ruto's moves, specifically to raise or to boost Kalonzo Musyoka's bid for 2027. That's number one. Number two, I think these members of parliament also feel that... Uh, William Ruto overlooked Kalonzo. You know, like in ODM, as a political party, you can uh, always just go to state house, talk with them. And Raila said very clearly that if you want to go to state house, have tea, have mandazi, you can go. But as long as you don't go in the name of the party, in the name of the coalition. Wiper is telling Ruto that if you want Ukambani members of parliament to work with you, please follow the path. 
and that path is actually Stephen Kalonzo Musyoka. If for example today Ruto and Kalonzo were to agree to work together through Wiper, do you think these members of parliament would say no? They can't say no. They'll definitely just say yes because Kalonzo is involved. But anytime you in, you, you you try to undermine Kalonzo, you overlook him. They can't support it because they'll be viewed back home as betrayers. So because they didn't want to be seen as people who are frustrating Kalonzo's bid and or betraying him, they decided we are not coming. So that's number two. Number three, I tend to think that Wiper Party respects their party organs. And I was reading uh, a post which was shared by Wambugu Mujiri. Let me just get it. Wambugu Mujiri, the former Nyeri town member of, member of parliament, yesterday shared this post by Kalonzo Musioka because after this meeting, this is what Kalonzo stated, the resolve and commitment by WEPA members to firmly remain in the Azimiola Moja, One Kenya Alliance, and support the ongoing people's baraza were some of the resolutions we came to we came to following our party's retreat. Despite systematic effort to entice and return the, the nation back to a uh, one-party state, we remain firm, intact, and committed. That was what Kalonzo posted. Then, this is what Wambugu is saying. That the discipline in both ODM party and Wiper party is quite something. Wiper especially are able to do it without looking dictatorial. Good stuff. So basically, there is a way Kalonzo Musioka has managed to command the Wiper Party, even without making noise. In ODM, they apply what they normally call Otada sec Section 2A. Otada sec Section 2A, for those who remember, Jaco used to be called Otada. Otada is basically force. Section 2A is that particular part of the constitution which was repealed. If you remember, the repeal was not peaceful. So in ODM, there's that particular rule of the jungle that Otada Section 2A can be applied anytime. And that is exactly what is likely to befall some of these members of parliament who went to Ruto, that they can be forcefully evicted. You saw, they, actually they did it to Yalango, being evicted out of that meeting. So for Kalonzo, you, you just see him doing his stuff Members of parliament refusing to go, but still, he's still there. So, respect for the party organs. Number four, I think these members of parliament also went back and studied the Ukambani past voting pattern. How have Ukambani been voting? 207, wiper. 2013, wiper. 2017, wiper. 2022, wiper. There are those who have always went, who have always gone the other side. How have they been punished by the people? Harshly. So these members of parliament are saying, as far as Ukabadi politics is concerned, it, it's better for me to be a member of parliament, side with Kalonzo, then when the next election come, then the voters will not view me as a, as a betrayer. They'll favor me. Kalonzo can even decide to give me a direct ticket and I'll be able to win my seat. Because those who have always left, most of the time, they never. There's this gentleman, a good member of parliament, Victor Mayaka, Muyaka, who was a Machakos township. Every time he's opposing uh, Kalonzo, he loses. Even last time. Of course, there are few members who are elected on, on uh, UDA in Ukambani, but majority. They don't want to make that risk. And lastly, the ground in Ukambani is anti-William Ruto. That's a fact you can't run away from. I'm saying this because even in the last election, I tend to think something always tells me that Kaluzo Musioka was almost going. Someone, something always tells me that Kaluzo Musioka was almost going to the other side. Something always tells me that. But he could not go. Why? Because the ground was anti Ruto. That's why he never really committed to Azimio. Kalonzo never really, when you talk of real commitment, he never really committed himself to, to Azimio. 
just towards the, the tail end after everything had fallen in place. That's when he came back, but even never really committed his time and resources company because he felt undermined. So the ground in Ukambani, as we speak, is still anti William Ruto. And these members of parliament, because they go to the ground, they go to funerals, they understand this. I don't know what you think. That's my take. Thank you guys, and may you have a good day. Bye-bye.